Hello, everyone. Uh, thank, welcome back to uh, Throwback Thursdays. James Commissar is putting that gown in my car right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, James. The back seat is fine. Okay, um, our, our final guest of the evening is a really a special guy. I mean, talk about magical. Um, he's a vi former vice president of uh, Magic Castle. He's a magician himself. Uh, he is a uh, seven-time a winner of uh, the Live Stage Magician of the Year um, at Magic Castle. And uh, we're going to do a little interview with him, and then he's going to do a little magic for us. Yeah. Mr. Pop Hayden! Yeah! Okay, Pop. So what's what's Test, with, testing? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so tell us about uh, Magic Castle. Magic. What about your real life magic? When did you start doing well, magic? And what was your what was compelling you to do it? I started magic when I was about nine or ten years old, and uh, I had seen uh, a magician uh, doing a show at a, at a summer camp, and it got me all excited about it. And, then uh, about that time, this old man moved into our neighborhood. Uh, he'd been in his 80s, had been a gambler. And uh, he taught me how to do the shell game and um, a few other old gambling kind of tricks, and that really got me started. And how old were you? I was nine or ten. Nine? I grew up in Tennessee and North Carolina. Now, did you ever watch Bewitch by any chance? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Big fan of Bewitch. So you were connected with it? You, you felt a. Uh, a kinship with? Oh, sure. I love that. That's one of my favorite shows when I was a kid growing up. And because it had magic, you know, they, they used actual magic tricks to make some of the magic work and stuff. Right. And, you know, that right. was interesting to me. So how did you come then to, now were you, um, did you do other employment? I mean, while you were doing magic on the side or were you always just a magician and performing your whole life? Well, I, um, <laughs> I, I studied, I went to college and I dropped out of college in the, um, 68 and uh, went to uh, New York City and started doing magic uh, on street corners in New York City and uh, that was basically uh, where I learned to, to really be a good magician to be uh, uh, to, to control the crowd and to uh, deal as a performer that's where I really learned my and, and you have a book that you're going to be sharing tonight and the title of that book is Stories of a Street Stories Performer. Stories of a Street yes, Performer. Was, there you go. It's the history of uh, my two, two or three years uh, of working on the streets in New York and Europe. Awesome, awesome. And so how did you come to Magic Castle? Tell us about that. Well, that was many years later. That was in, in 76 or so I, I, I came out to come to Magic Castle um, to uh, uh, see magicians like uh, uh, Di Vernon and, and uh, Senator Crandall and you know, heroes of mine. Uh, so I wanted to be out where they were. So I came out here. What is it, what is it about magic that intrigues people so much? What is it about the magical, the magician, or, or bewitched, or what is going on with that? What is why is that so interesting to people? Well, I think um, magic uh, is is kind of different from a story magic. You know, when you when you tell people a story about magic, it's fun and people let them. They have suspension of disbelief. A magician. Uh, doesn't want you to suspend disbelief. He wants you to disbelieve as much as you want, <laughs> and he's going to make it happen. In magic, we create a story uh, for people to tell, uh, rather than uh, tell people a story. We they're a witness, a participant in a story that happened to them. They saw this guy put a coin in a beer bottle, and that's the story they tell. And what we do is we create those stories for the audience to tell about they saw this amazing amazing thing well so how many different kinds of magicians are there are there are there several different oh kinds? yeah there's all kinds of close-up magicians or do the close uh, close-up magic with coins and cards and and things like that and uh, a cabaret magician will work like in a comedy club situation where the stage is surrounded by the audience and it doesn't have much in the way of stage it's just kind of a platform and then there are um, stage performers and illusionists. Uh, we call it an illusionist is anyone that does grand illusion, which uses an animal bigger than a dog or a person. So the, all the different kinds of magic are, are more about the venue in which you're doing it than anything else. So you wouldn't, I mean, you're, 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 you live a very full life. You wouldn't have chosen any other location. You've been very happy. 
uh, bringing magic to the world, yes? Oh yes, it's been, you know, I, um, um, I love magic, it's been, you know, it's, it's been my life. For what are some years. of your happiest moments that you've had with any, I don't know, particular audience members? Did you ever bring them in? Is that how you work? Have you ever done that? And do you bring them into your act? Oh yes, I bring up people from the audience and I've worked with uh, people. Um, I do mostly uh, uh, close-up magic and uh, stand-up platform type magic. I used to do an illusion show with the big illusions, but I don't, haven't done that in a long time. Uh, to me, uh, the fun of magic is is that uh, the magician gets to play two characters at once. It's not unlike a, an actor who's usually only playing one. The magician is the trickster himself who is trying to fool you, and he's usually also a character in front of that, the magical character that believes in magic mm. and is magical. And uh, that's the fun, is watching those two characters inter interact with each other and with the audience. Well, I think we're going to see you interact with your magic when we get right back here. So thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.